show two yellows, then a red, but it's poor game management, really. It's always a risk to play advantage after a cautionable offence. I'd suggest that you should only ever do it when the next kick of the ball would either go into the net or would set up a clear goal-scoring chance. But whenever you play advantage in these circumstances, you should always make every effort to shout to the player concerned that he has committed a yellow card offence as play continues to avoid this sort of dispute. Welcome back to The Ref Show with David Hurst and Keith Hackett this week. If you watched uh, part one, you'll be aware of all the criticisms of the modern day footballer and how that contributed to England's demise uh, at the Euros. The charges that the academy system isn't working and one of those charges is there's a lack of proper competitive football for talented young players, particularly in the Premier League academies, until they get farmed out on loan and they start to learn what the game, the hard school of Knox, what, it, what it's about. Where does the Uden Trophy, a major youth tournament in Sheffield, come into, come into that, fit into that, Keith? Well, uh, we consulted with Dave Richardson, who's the president of the Coaches Association, and it was evident that uh, there was no competitive games for age 14, under 16 level uh, for professional clubs. So hence the Uden Trophy. And uh, of course we, we ran it for the first time last year. Uh, we've increased, it was a major success, beyond our wildest dreams. You know, we, the, the city took it on board because we wanted to use the Uden also, not just for the development of players, but also to recognize the heritage of Sheffield you know we started the game uh, but we don't talk about it often enough and so the outcome was we brought the teams across last year we had Sheffield United and Sheffield Wednesday competing uh, the kids were away from home we put them in single dormitory accommodation all the teams at, at the uh, Sheffield University accommodation they were fed there they mixed as teams, mixed as individuals, and the coaches had time with them. So for the first time, the coaches had them away from the home environment to be able to work on the skill sets and work on the winning mentality to win games. So it's a life experience for starters, David, but also, as Keith says, it's about learning to win and learning to lose as well. Well, it, it certainly is. I mean, it's a, it's a competition, you know, and as Keith rightly says, there's no such thing as a league, you know, competitive league but, uh, system. So it's great for, for kids to get involved and, and, and feel what it's like to actually need to go and win the game, mm. you know, or you're out of, the, out of the competition sort of thing. You know, so it, it's great for them in, in that development and bringing them on as young adults, you know, away from their families, working in, in what is really deemed a professional situation, yeah. you know, for, for young, young up-and-coming footballers. You know, like I say, away from, away from home, interacting with coaches, interacting with the players, with the teammates, with oppositions, you know, referees, you know, qualified referees, refereeing the games, and getting a full understanding of an all-round situation than, rather than just, it's a game of football. The support, so widespread, and from so many clubs across the world, 32 yeah. teams have entered, professional clubs have entered, yeah. suggests that there's a recognition within the game that we need more of this? Oh, I think there's no doubt that we will see an ongoing expansion over the years and our intention is to bring women football into the, into the scenario and also then a grassroots programme as well. So internationally, we want to grow this to, uh, into a, a huge tournament. Obviously, last year we, we, we were able to get a formula that worked. Everything was efficient. This year we're going to use two venues, which brings in the complications. We were given terrific support by the two universities, no question, uh, and then followed with the, with the, with the city council. You know, uh, the, the mayor had uh, team representatives into his parlour. He came to present the award at the final. We used Bramall Lane, which for the kids was terrific mm -hmm. to be able to play on the professional ground, and they didn't disgrace it. Uh, you know, they, we we saw some real skill from some of the players. In fact, it was a surprise to me. But there is another facet of this, and that is that we use the tournament in, a, in an environment that allows us to be able to coach and educate the, the referees. Mm -hmm. 
So we bring referees in, again, from overseas. We have people like Roger Diltz, Mark Elsey, and, and others who've all officiated at top level, offering advice, coaching them, encouraging them, giving lectures. And I think one of the successes last year was the, the fact that we'd, you know, there's lots of players at professional level at these academies get rejected. And then, wow, for them, for their families, it's a massive upheaval. You know, they've, they've dreamed of the success and someone has made a decision, right or wrong, because often the decision to call these players is wrong. Can be. And we've seen them. that yeah, through people right. like Vardy. Yeah. And then, so what we did was we, we brought in a couple of ex-pro players who they themselves, Kevin Davis was one of them, to actually say, look, in, in my career, I've been rejected in the system and then come back and play and represent the country. And I think that is, gives them an understanding of, look, it's not all sweet and roses here. It can be pretty sour at some stage and it can knock someone to the extent that they never play again. None of us want that. The representation is great from abroad. The two Glasgow clubs, I believe, both the Sheffield clubs, Sheffield United and Sheffield Wednesday, taking part. From your point of view, and, and you coach the kids at, at Sheffield Wednesday, David, what's the attraction for you? Competitive football, you know, and pitting yourself against other clubs at this yeah. level, from, from, like you say, around the world, uh, around the uh, British Isles and around the world. You know, it's, it's a fantastic, like I say, it's a great opportunity for young kids to get out and experience that, that sort of competition football. You know, as we say, we don't do it enough. I think if you speak to a lot of coaches around the country, uh, at academies, they will say, we can't get into that tournament. Can we get in that one? Can we get... There's just not enough of them about. And kids need that. We need Mark, to bring them through that way. Mark Lawrence has made the same points as you, and he's backing it as an ambassador for the, yeah. for the tournament, yeah. isn't he? And when yeah. somebody of his experience and stature does, and David, of course, well, effectively then, now what we've got is we've got clubs, uh, because we restrict it to a given size, we have clubs who want to come uh, in the years to come uh, from, from other, other nations across the world. I mean, Seattle Sounders are coming, and that in itself, we'll see where the American academies are, because it's a professional club. We've got, uh, I think, uh, other clubs from other nations. We've got the academy from Qatar coming. So I, I think all these clubs coming in will test each other. I mean, there's no question last year that uh, we were all taken aback, as I say, by the quality of the, the, of the play. I think, I think we'll all say, we, I, I mean, I was at the Bramall Lane and you watched watching games there and uh, you saw a few stars of the future, yeah. trust me. Yeah. That's brilliant, that's what it's all about. It's here to stay, the Uden Trophy, watch out for it and do attend games. If you possibly can, it's free, it's free to watch those games. Talking of free, National Football Museum in Manchester is a, a great visit at any time for anyone. You are the ref heavily involved in that sponsoring the, the Walk of Fame there, Keith. Yes, I mean, Trevelyan over the years has, has uh, done the drawings of the World Cup players and then nationally there was, a, 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 if you like, an invite to suggest who ought to be on the World Cup Fame and I think that will be ongoing. So you have the likes of Messi and Ronaldo uh, represented uh, in that walk of fame. One or two omissions, uh, though. Uh, well, I, I mean, I mean. <laughs> you looked at me there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 again, the public decide. Uh, That's but, why then. <laughs> but, uh, but, but ultimately, yeah. we've done more than that because not only have we sponsored the walk of fame with Trevelyan's insight, uh, they've allowed us to uh, put together a display of refereeing uh, aspects. So the, the National Football Museum are recognising that refereeing does have a part <laughs> to play in the game. Are you on the Walk of Fame? Um, your name um, on the well, Walk of Fame? Uh, uh, there is a picture of me somewhere, but I don't, I'm not on the Walk of Fame and never will be. But I think effectively the interactive You Are the Ref, which yeah. we've had running in national newspaper for a number of years, that was in when the, when the National Football Museum. And it's yeah. proven to be very popular. So there might be a walk of shame one day. Uh, <laughs> so you put forward for that one. I'm thinking the travelator of uh, fame. <laughs> Saves the walking. I, might be on that <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think there might be a few candidates for that one. 
<laughs> Here's me as well. Uh, thanks, guys. It's been brilliant. Uh, and I hope you've enjoyed this ref show with a difference. Of course, when the season kicks off again, we'll be back down to talking uh, football proper with the Premier League week after week on youaretheref.com. I'm sure you'll be in touch with us. We always welcome that. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs>